a bug repelling lamp. I've looked at these before, but this is one that was sent to me from Japan by Jerry and Rosie. And they sent me a whole box of stuff, including some really specialist lamps. So I'll take a look at those later on. Um, both Jerry and Rosie are involved in the sort of electrical industry. Jerry's quite interesting. They spend some of the time in the UK and they send, spend some time in Japan. And he works in municipal lighting um, and neon signage and stuff like that. It's quite an interesting and varied career. So this lamp, uh, I'll plug it in, it is rated for uh, 86 to 265 volts, which is good because in Japan, their voltage is typically 100 volts, and here, of course, it is, well, at the moment, it's 245.7 or 8. Um, so this lamp is lighting up what I could only describe as a lemon yellow. It really is, let's see, do I have a bit of paper? I do have a bit of paper. I shall use Jerry's letter here. Uh, that's not really helping much, is it? It's just completely swamping out. Okay, I won't do that then. But I'll describe it. Is that really... It's almost like a lurid. It's actually yellower than this traditional sodium goldeny orangey light. Um, and I, I sh I'll open it up. The idea is that because the insects are more attracted to sort of blue and ultraviolet light, they're less likely to be attracted to these lamps. So these are used in outdoor alleyways and entrance ways to buildings. And there are a couple of theories. It doesn't attract the insects in the first place, but that also then reduces spiders that could get cobwebs all over the light fittings because there's less food for them. Now, this appears to be plastic. I would give it the tooth test. So the chances are it's not going to break if I try take it off. And it does feel loose. It rotates, but it's not really... It might not come off easily. It's just come off. So it's using the phosphor-coated LEDs. I thought it might just use standard. That makes sense that it will be the yellow phosphor LEDs because yellow has always been a sort of an inefficient colour in the older gallium arsenide type technologies. Let's say uh, I get some of this, um, the silicon goop round and see if we can get the power supply out and take a wee look at it. I would guess the power supply is going to be a fairly standard sort of uh, bright powery type thing. One of those little uh, standard little power supplies that is so common in the industry. Although having said that, the power rating of this light, which I've just completely forgotten, I had it plugged in there, I think it was about 6 watts, um, at a power factor of roughly 0.5. So I would say that the, that does really point, uh, particularly with the voltage variation, at being a little uh, switch mode supply. Is this going to come out easily? Not sure. Is it going to be one that's got the metal housing, particularly at 6 watts inside as well, as the uh, the metal plate on top? I can, but try and get it out. I, if, I, if I don't succeed in a short time, I shall pause momentarily to... Oh, no, here it comes, here it comes. And there is the power supply, stuck to double-sided tape inside, and with some tape wrapped around it. Shall we liberate that? Shall we get that supply out? Yes, we shall. I'll have to sneak a pair of snips in and cut some wires. It's a bigger power supply than normal, but that kind of fits because uh, typically the power supplies you find in many of these things are quite low power. They're only rated at up to about 3 watts. Am I going to be able to cut these wires? That double-sided tape is getting right in the way. It's the only way I'm going to get this out. I could remove. No, it's no point in that. I'll just, uh, I'll just cut them. I'll just randomly grope in with my, with my snips and try and cut, try and land in the right place and cut one. But if, I, if I don't have any success shortly, I will pause just to avoid a long video of me fumbling around inside a light fitting. That's it. That's it out. The tape is that uh, it's not captain tape, it's a sort of the transformer winding tape. Commonly used over the layers of windings. I'm expecting this possibly just to have the little 8-pin chip. This isn't unwrapping too easily. It's possible it's got a fully charged capacitor. I'll find out when I put my fingers across it. Mm, no, it's fine. Uh, what do we have? We've got a fairly big capacitor. We have the a big 
ubiquitous. Oh no, we don't have the ubiquitous little chip. We've got a small chip here, uh, a little sort of. I was going to say six pin chip. It does look like it's got six pins, but it actually looks like a a tiny little eight pin chip. Let's uh, zoom down just a tad here without going too far. It looks like a standard sort of a uh, eight pin chip, but a smaller eight pin chip, but with a couple of pins missing just for electrical separation. Is there a number on that chip? There is. Oh, it's a bright power. There's a surprise. It's a bright power. I'm just going to get it to the right angle so I can actually read it. Um, I've just steamed up. It's the excitement here. BP3165, by the look of it. BP3165. I shall angle that so you can have a wee look if you wish. I'm not sure if that will actually show up too clearly. Uh, so that will just be a standard. It's quite unusual that it's so small, though, for the little uh, switch mode driver. The, the rest of the circuitry is classic. It's got the incoming supply. It's going to a bridge rectifier. It's got the smoothing capacitor, which is rated 400 volts, 6.8 megafarad. That little driver chip with a current sense resistor. That will probably be quite a low value one. Let's uh, get the other magnifying glass into that. 1.8 ohm, that is it. Um, as with many of these things, I don't see... A little, uh, usually there's a little snubber across many switch mode supplies, but I don't see that here. It does have what looks like a separated output, and it's got a little tiny interference suppression class Y capacitor across that, rated for 1kV, 102, 1000 uh, picofarads, that's 1 nanofarad. Don't know if you can, well that's it, this is steamed up, don't know if you can see that there. Uh, then it's got the single diode in the output and the 100 microfarad 63 volt capacitor, which suggests uh, a fair sort of voltage at the sort of uh, current limited supply to get that sort of power. Uh, it says 7 watt in the panel. Uh, I wonder if these are multi chip LEDs. I guess I could find that out by putting my meter to diode test and seeing if one of the LEDs lights up when I put the meter across it. Oops, getting sort of continuity across the LED. Does it have reverse polarity diode? But, oh, actually, you know what? Two LEDs are lighting at once. Don't know if you can see that. Hold on, I shall shield it so you can see. See how two LEDs have lit up at once? Uh, so that suggests that uh, they're all in pairs, I would guess, then. They are. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pairs, seven watts. That's pretty much the best part of an amp if it is a seven watt panel that's actually going through that. So each LED is theoretically getting around about 500 milliamps. That's quite a lot. But they are designed, optimised for that. What about the case does it have? It does have the little aluminium cup here that that was glued into with presumably a thermally conductive uh, silicon glue to actually carry the heat down and dissipate it over the whole body of the lamp. That's why it's maybe perhaps a bit longer uh, than uh, a typical lamp. But there we go, that's, that's interesting. It's a very, very interesting colour. I've never seen a lamp quite so lemon yellow as that. I wonder, what it, I wonder what it's like, actually, you know, if, if that's used in an outside light, I suppose ultimately it's like high pressure, low pressure sodium, isn't it? You'd just be used to that fact that it's uh, it's kind of got that sort of coloured who around the area, that sort of colour. Uh, yeah, interesting, very interesting to take apart. I see all the other component positions in these. Diode positions and resistor positions, I wonder what that's for. And little sort of option pads, although I... Yeah, I was going to say those option pads almost look like the ones that they put a blob of solder on just to show which particular uh, model of lamp it is, but they've actually got a wire soldered onto it in this instance. Very odd. Strange little lamp. Well worth opening and taking a look at. Very interesting. So uh, thanks to Jeremy and uh, Rosie for sending uh, this lamp, and I'll be taking a look at some of the other items too in the near future. I'd like to make a little correction, because I screwed up my current calculations. I was thinking, 
an amp, really? It's not an amp. It, I was forgetting, I, I miscalculated there, I was uh, just thinking the number of LEDs. I should have actually considered that LEDs are in pairs and there's three volts across each. So technically speaking, there's eight pairs, three volts across each LED pair. So it's about 24 volts. And uh, when you divide that with the power that it displayed that the unit was consuming, let's plug it in. It shows a power consumption of about 6.6 .6 watts, but that part of that is losses in the power supply. In reality, the current flowing through the LEDs is 220-ish milliamps, and that equates down to about 110 milliamps per LED, and that's more realistic for that size of LED. So, uh, interesting. I wonder if these LEDs, if it's a specific wavelength of yellow they've chosen, or it's just one of the standard yellow LEDs, because you do get the yellow phosphor LEDs that's commonly commonly used in this sort of LED tape. Um, the traditional gallium arsenide yellow LED is nowhere near as efficient as these for the intensity output, so by using the phosphor, they just gain that extra output, that higher, higher brightness. Very interesting. It's a neat lamp. It's an interesting power supply as well. I am fingering the mains side capacitor here. Mm. Uh, so there we go. Well worth taking to bits. I'm also spotting that this uh, circuit board has a little tangs out the end and uh, solder ribs on it. I wonder if this is designed to... It is actually, isn't it? It's designed to slot through a circuit board and be soldered on with those probably. Or is that for test purposes? That's another possibility. Interesting stuff. Uh, neat little circuit board. Neat little lamp. Uh, well worth opening up and taking a look at.